The good news is, is that HIV has really become a treatable chronic disease. So what I'll tell patients when they come into care is that they can expect to live a long, healthy life as long as they engage in medical care, take good care of themselves, and take their medications. We in the U.S. and increasingly worldwide have moved towards a universal ART system where we offer antiretroviral therapy to everyone regardless of their T-cell count, um, and they have many, many different options in terms of what medications they can take. Um, so unlike in years past, we now have a number of different combinations, some of which are one pill once a day. We're able to really tailor the therapy to their other illnesses and drug intolerance, get them on a medication that I know that they will be able to tolerate. It's not always the first regimen that we give them, but I tell folks that I can pretty much guarantee them that we can find a regimen that they will be able to tolerate very well that should be very effective for their HIV treatment. And that on effective therapy within three to six months, their viral load should become undetectable um, and that they should start moving into the chronic well-controlled phase of HIV therapy. Now I will tell people who have advanced disease with a low T cell count, particularly if they have another opportunistic infection that the first three to six months can be a little bit rocky because they're at risk of something called immune reconstitution syndrome which is when the immune system wakes up and recognizes inflammation or infections that were present that it wasn't functioning normally to fight off but again I look at this although it can be difficult for patients and their providers as overall a good sign that the immune system is moving back to health and is doing the job that it should have been doing um, so we never like to wait until people have very advanced HIV or are presenting with opportunistic infections but even those patients who can be quite quite ill at the time of presentation we have every reason to expect that we can get them back to um, a very healthy healthy state, again, if they can get through the initial difficult time and that the HIV medications should be able to control their virus very well and get them to a chronic disease state, much like things that we care for all the time in the American medical system, diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, that can be very serious illnesses, but if cared for correctly, can still be very well tolerated and people can have long, healthy lives. I think one thing that is really important that's changed in HIV care as well is that not only can I tell my treatment naive patients, so patients who've never taken HIV medicines before, though I can get them on something that they will tolerate very well and should be very, very effective, but patients who've had experience with HIV medicines and may have developed drug resistance or acquired drug resistance along the way, the expectation now in 2012 is that you know 95% of people with drug resistant HIV should be able to achieve the same goal as people who are on their first regimen, which is an undetectable HIV viral load and excellent control of their HIV disease because we have a spectrum of really potent agents that work including against drug resistant virus. So it's so important that we have that a wide variety of agents, but also that we have that expectation that even for patients who've been multiply drug experienced or have drug resistance, that they should um, and can attain a, a viral load that's undetectable.